I'm standing here, Kasper Moth Paulsen, assistant professor at Chalmer University of Technology, the division called Applied Chemistry, and leader of a group trying to solve one of the biggest challenge in this world with limited resources, how to capture and store solar energy. Tell us about this gigantic yeah. challenge. Yes, so uh, in a future society where we have limited resources in, in terms of fossil fuels, we would like to develop technologies that can uh, where we can harvest, for example, solar energy. And today, uh, photovoltaics, for example, have become uh, tremendously uh, effective and also very uh, price competitive. So today, in some countries, uh, uh, they are implemented on a large scale. Uh, but uh, associated with this uh, challenge of uh, producing solar energy, it's also the problem that uh, the sun doesn't shine at night. Or in Nordic countries like uh, Denmark and Sweden, we don't have so much sun in the winter. So uh, associated with uh, implementing large-scale solar energy, there's also a storage of energy that is going to be a future challenge. Uh, because uh, solar energy uh, power production needs to be used directly. We cannot store the energy. From the we have no technology to store the energy from the solar panels. So uh, what we are trying to do is to uh, build a system where we store the solar energy as chemical energy in uh, molecules. We call it uh, molecular solar thermal. And uh, the idea here is that we irradiate um, a molecule with light and uh, the molecule is then converted into another molecule that we can store over time. And then when we need this energy out again, we can trigger this molecule to release the energy that we have stored and heat something. And then we can use this heat to drive a, uh, to, to heat a house or to drive some uh, uh, heating uh, something in a factory, for example, where you need to heat something. It's uh, before we go into the molecule, which yeah, yeah, yeah. is obviously the key in, yeah. your, in your research, yeah. um, I mean, science group all over the world is trying to solve this big yeah. challenge yeah. Uh, for many decades, yeah. actually. Yeah. Why haven't they succeeded? What is yeah. the big problem? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's uh, several challenges and several uh, ways you can address this problem. You can imagine if you just could build very large uh, batteries, for example, then you could solve this. But it has been very challenging and very expensive to try to build batteries and there's no battery technology that can for example fuel a whole city or provide power for a whole city that is not possible you can make batteries for cars but already that is very challenging on the other hand there are people trying to do uh, chemical storage in different ways uh, there's a research area called artificial photosynthesis where they try to also convert solar energy into chemical energy or uh, trying to convert uh, uh, water into hydrogen and uh, that is uh, progressing, but it's very diff difficult. It's not so easy. It has to also has to be, not only it has to work and be efficient, it also has to be cost effective. And that is uh, so, so something that might work in the lab might be too expensive to meet uh, the market. So uh, there's many challenges in this. And uh, what we do as scientists is we explore what is possible. And we try to change uh, and explore. We, we, we every, every week we go to work and try to expand what is possible and test can we do this or can we do that? And then from a discovery in the lab to a real world device or real world application, there's a long road of optimization, market uh, evaluation, I mean, the cost has to come together and so on. So there are many challenges associated with this and, and we are in the first step of developing something new. So it's not something that will work tomorrow. It may be something that can work in 10 or 15 years or more. Okay. But we are exploring uh, the possible, so to say. And your, um, sort of uh, bet uh, in this <laughs> is a s synthetic molecule. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. tell us, uh, is it a molecule that you create in, in a here in the, in the yeah. laboratory? Yeah, so we are, uh, basically we are a synthetic chemistry group. So we design molecules uh, and try to improve the properties. And to, to for this molecular solar thermal, there's a lot of properties we need to take care of. For example, the molecule has to absorb the solar light in a very efficient way. It needs to store the solar energy in an efficient way and needs to be able to release this energy again. And uh, all these uh, steps we need to take into account when we design the molecule. And that we do uh, by thinking, but also by combining uh, our thinking with uh, quantum chemical models, uh, computer models of how this molecule will work. So then when, when we have a good candidate molecule, then we look into uh, the synthetic chemistry literature and uh, try to combine what is known from the last 150 years of chemistry into a synthetic procedure that we test in the lab. 
then we test that. We start from molecules that we can buy. Uh, maybe it comes from oil, maybe it comes from plants. We convert it in several synthetic steps. And in the end, we stand with the molecule we have designed. And then we can test the properties of this molecule. And hopefully, it's better than the previous generation. So we, ideally, we should be able to improve and improve until we get something that is really effective. A molecule is obviously very, very small. Yeah. And it's quite abstract how, how it works. What, yeah. How would you see your final product, so to speak? Is yeah. it a liquid like mm -hmm. water to transport? Yeah. So ideally, the molecule should uh, be a liquid like water or like a yeah, some fluid that we can uh, pump into a solar collector and then where it stores the energy and then it could be pumped down in a storage tank where it's uh, safe there for future use and then when we need the energy we can pump it back into some uh, energy release device that consists of a catalyst maybe and there we release the energy and use that energy when we need it and then we can reuse the molecule so it's a really close cycle zero emission project i mean there's no uh, combustion, there's no uh, uh, release of any chemicals or anything to the outside world. It's a closed cycle. We reuse the same compound again and again and again. So is this pretty much how you try to use water to heat, except that it doesn't lose the heat on, yeah, the, on its way? Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, I mean, one of the existing technologies that do sort of the same is uh, you could heat water and store it in a large uh, bath of water uh, that maybe is uh, 50 degrees or 60 degrees warm, and then uh, reuse this temperature, uh, this uh, heated water later. But the challenge with this is you need to isolate the water not to lose the energy and also the temperature gradient. I mean you cannot heat more than 60 degrees or 80 degrees with this water. It cannot be warmer than that. So we hope to reach higher energy density so that we can heat something several hundred degrees. Okay. Uh, so we, that is uh, our niche is that we can store, store our molecules for years and then we can potentially reach higher temperature gradients. That is our goal. We want to be able to heat something several hundred degrees uh, with this stored chemical energy. Can you make electricity from this? In the you can, you can. It is a possibility. Um, the challenge of uh, converting heat into electricity is uh, governed by uh, classical thermodynamics and there's a limit to how efficient this could be. So the com typically when you have uh, low temperature gradients that we will have in our systems, the efficiency can maximally become 10-15% probably. And this is one possibility uh, to use it as, uh, as a way to store uh, energy and then convert it into heat and then into electricity and use the electricity. I think the first uh, application for us could be in more in uh, areas where you need uh, heat on demand, for example, in uh, uh, industrial processes that need uh, heating or to house heating and so on. But uh, that is the future to, to tell. I mean, we, we do basic research. We try to develop the processes and the molecules and see how efficient they can be. Once uh, we reach that state where we really think we have some really, really efficient, then uh, we can try to see what is the market. But okay. uh, and we're actually standing here in the lab where yeah. you do these synthetic molecules yes. and try to, yeah. uh, and we have very strong light here. Yeah. Wh what are you doing here? Yeah, uh, so uh, so we, uh, I have here a, a picture of how our uh, setup could be. We okay. have have a solar collector here, yeah. and then the storage tank I mentioned, mm. and then the heat release part. And here we have a one way, an example of one way how this solar collector part could be. And we are standing here with a test device that we are, uh, we are building. And to test it, we have a lamp, a special lamp that has uh, a solar spectrum uh, equal to the solar spectrum. So this is so that equals the sun. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> this is our equivalent to the sun because some days it's a shade. Uh, in Gothenburg, so we cannot have a full power. So uh, we use this uh, solar uh, simulator, and then here is our device that consists of um, what is called a solar concentrator, which is basically a mirror. Okay. Uh, and then we have uh, here we have a transparent glass tube where we pump the molecules through. So this concentrator uh, mirror uh, changes the position of the. I mean, takes all this sun that hits this and focus it into this very narrow channel. And by that we get a, a very um, high intensity light. And that means that we can, we think this is a, a sort of economic way to build devices like this. So we can pump our molecules through and uh, con photo convert them uh, inside this uh, small channel here. Okay. So this is what we do. And what, what you mentioned in year here, 10 to 15 years yeah. before uh. you can see, what, yeah. what, is, what kind of breakthroughs do you still have to make in order yeah. to make 
ready products, so yeah, to yeah. speak. So, so we, last year we demonstrated the first uh, example of this full cycle reaction, but it was really, really inefficient. It was uh, a fraction of a percent efficient, and it was not really robust enough to work for years and years. What was the problem? So there's problems is the stability, for, for one, it has to be stable, it has to be more efficient, and it has to be uh, economically viable. So uh, these three major challenges, we have to work on this. And uh, right now we are really uh, trying to address the efficiency by improving different aspects of the, of the chemical design of the molecules and also the economic side. Because in our first demonstration, we used some very, very expensive um, chemicals that would not be practical in uh, real world applications. So now we try to use uh, carbon based materials that you can in principle get from uh, sustainable sources like uh, corn products or and then we could try to convert that into uh, functional molecules. So our, the goal is to, to be able to synthesize these type of compounds from completely renewable feedstocks, like uh, the different kind of uh, organic uh, sources. So we don't, uh, we're not relying on oil in our synthetic procedures. Okay. Yeah. But you have a plan how to do all this. Yeah, that this is our plan. And you're quite sure that <laughs> you're going to succeed as well. We though. hope, we hope, uh, but uh, you never know, it's uh, research. So, uh, mm. so we, we are exploring the possible. We don't know if it's going to work, but we try our best, and we we have uh, made plans on how to how to make it work. And what about the rest of the science world? Do they uh, follow what you're doing here yeah. closely? Has it um, made a lot of international uh, mm -hmm. attention? Yeah. Yes, yes. So we, when we made this uh, uh, this uh, new discovery last year, uh, there was a lot of interest, uh, and uh, I can see now that other research groups around the world are receiving major funding to sort of follow in our footsteps and do similar things. Mm. So it's really uh, creating a lot of attention. And also uh, we've been in contact with, uh, with, uh, with other scientists who want to do similar things like than this. So, okay. so it's and, really and what are your commercial, uh, well, no, not commercial, mm. wrong. What is your actually edge? What, what are your uniqueness uh, mm. in order to be ahead of all the other science groups? <laughs> yeah, so is so it so the molecule that mm, is a yeah. key here? So the challenge is, I mean, we started this because we wanted to see if it's possible. And uh, so when we started this, there was not so many other people uh, doing it. It is it's a research area that has been, have seen some activity back in the 70s and 80s, but then it has been quite silent. And we thought we wanted to re, uh, dis re research this again and do, uh, do new things in this uh, area. So uh, when we started this, we were more alone in the world, maybe not so much competition, but now, there will be competitors, and uh, then we now we really have to step up and uh, be sure that we are ahead of competition. So, uh, I mean, we try to do our best and uh, be good uh, synthetic chemists to develop new molecules as fast as we can. But it's also a funding issue, of course. If we have the sufficient manpower, then we will stay ahead. Uh, if not, then uh, then it will be challenging to keep up with the competition. Huh? To solve the world's energy huh. challenge is <laughs> also obviously a great uh, commercial. Yeah. challenge from the commercial yeah. world. What, what can you say about the interest yeah. from companies yeah. around your research? Yeah, uh, th there are some uh, companies that have shown interest uh, in this and also, yeah, so there are some companies that have shown interest in this. Personally, I think we need to uh, prove ourselves a little bit more. It, I think we need to uh, improve the efficiency a little bit more so, it's, so we are closer to the application. So I think we will need three, four, five years more of uh, basic research before we can start to do the first demonstration uh, more closer to commercial demonstration devices because uh, there is some uh, challenges with stability and efficiency that has to be solved first before it's meaningful to think about uh, applications and as a basic research, uh, research university this is our job I mean we need to test if it's possible or not and uh, we, we try to do things that the, the, the companies cannot do or to, that is too high risk for the companies. So we, we should do our best to, to uh, do this research and then at some point it should be ready to, for the companies to take over. And uh, so I, I try to keep a, a dialogue with these companies and uh, discuss what are their needs, what, what kind of uh, applications could they be looking at and what, how should we try to design our experiments so they are as relevant as possible. But I think it will take some years, uh, and, uh, and I think it's also important to be honest about this, that we are we're doing basic research with an applied uh, application in mind. So uh, You were mentioning this was a big research field in the 70s. Uh, what do one know today in order to pick up this kind of uh, research? Yes, yes. So today uh, there has been an uh, imp impressive progress in many areas of uh, 
chemistry and uh, computational methods in particular. So I think today with the, with the help of uh, computational methods to design these molecules, I think we have a better possibility to design the molecule and also understand the processes and how they work. And if we understand how they work, we can also better have a better possibility to improve the, the performance of these type of materials. So this is uh, what I think. I think we have a better edge in the, we can move faster than they could back then because of the help of uh, computer technology of different ways, different kinds and progress in computational methods in particular. Okay. Com com computational. Computational. The use of computers. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, so you can model the properties of molecules or mo model the energies in molecules in a computer. Ah. And uh, if you can do that uh, in an efficient way, then you don't have to go into the lab and build the whole molecule uh, atom by atom. And uh, then you can, uh, if you have a good model, you can screen hundreds uh, of different candidates and, and choose the top candidates that you can go into the lab and make. And that is, uh, that is a way to save time and make more advanced uh, molecules and better progress, I think. Finally, or uh, your personal thought, uh, uh, is this going to be uh, important building stone for solving the, the energy challenge in the world when yeah. it comes to solar energy? I think, yeah, I think uh, not one technology can solve everything. And I think uh, our niche is going to be uh, areas where heating is needed, uh, like industrial processes where uh, low, temperature, um, low to medium temperature heating is needed. It's about 16% of uh, energy consumption in, in, in industry in the world. And maybe for house heating also it could be a, a part, but we are not going to solve all energy issues with this technology is going to be uh, add-on or be a competitive in certain niches. Uh, I don't think one single technology, I mean, solar, te solar energy is one, uh, wind, hydropower, and others uh, will be, uh, the combination of this will be the future energy mix, I think.